Up next, we have Bro slash Zeke attack based analytics and reporting by Mark Fernandez. Mark is the lead cybersecurity engineer for the MITRE Corporation Bazaar. Good morning. Uh, thank you for the introduction. My name is Mark Fernandez. I'm from MITRE Corporation. Today I'll be talking about the Bro Zeke attack based analytics and reporting. Uh, the motivation for this project be for me began a few years ago when a colleague of mine from another, was working at another company gave a presentation on detecting adversary behaviors via internal network monitoring. And internal network monitoring, just to be clear on what we mean by that, that's network traffic that, that's inside your local area network. It does, it transit, does not transit your network boundary to or from the internet, anything like that. It's local network traffic from workstation to workstation communications, workstation to server communications, server to server communications, et cetera. And his message was, let's focus on adversary behaviors. Um, let's do more than just signature-based detections or indicators of compromise, IOCs. Let's look at what the adversaries are doing. And he was using you know, language, he was saying things that are very similar to the MITRE attack model. Things like execution, credential access, discovery, lateral movement. But he wasn't referencing the attack model per se. He was using language similar to the attack model, but not the attack model. And the product he was using was, you know, he couldn't share the analytics, he couldn't share the code he had developed under the hood to do these things, but he was able to share the concepts and say, use these concepts, focus on adversary behaviors, internal network monitoring, go out and do good things. Well, that inspired me to, I uh, submitted, a, started out as a small internally funded research project within MITRE. I submitted the research proposal and I was able to convince them to, that internal network monitoring is a good thing. We could use it to detect adversary behaviors based on the attack model. And, and it worked. I convinced them that internal network monitoring is a good thing. But of course, you can have too much of a good thing. And there lies the problem. Internal network traffic can be very noisy. Uh, there's so much activity, legitimate authorized activity, that it can generate overwhelming volumes of network traffic. And in a Windows environment, there are two very common and very powerful network protocols that are the basis for most user-based and, and system administrator-based activities. So the server message block, or SMB protocol, it facilitates things like file and print sharing and mapping network drives, and the remote procedure call, or RPC protocol. Now, almost every system service in the Windows operating system has an RPC interface associated with it. And Windows has a lot of system services, many of which, if not most of which, can be accessed remotely via RPC. And when you do a deep dive into the technical specifications of these two protocols, you realize you could do, detect lots of attack-like things with it. Credential access, execution, discovery, lateral movement, even a couple of other things in the persistence and defense evasion uh, categories. So I needed a tool that would give me that type of visibility, that granular detail in these two network protocols so I could focus on the parts of these protocols that I care about and filter out the noise or filter out the parts that I don't care about. Well, the technology, of course, is why I'm here. Uh, the Bro, or start when I started the project in early 2018, it was still called Bro. So now with the name transition, uh, the Zeek Network Security Monitor. There were a couple of key advantages to it, other than I was already familiar with it, but also because it's an open source product, open source software, if I needed a function that Zeek didn't already do, well, I could just write that function and build it into my instance of Zeek. And then, at a, you know, when the time is right, share it with the community. Um, also, it has, offers deep packet inspection, particularly for these two network protocols, which was a very beneficial and very powerful starting point for this project. And this project is called Bazaar, B-Z-A-R. So, you know, the key for any project to be successful is to have a catchy and memorable acronym. So B-Z-A-R is a play on words on bizarre, meaning something very strange or unusual, especially as to cause interest. So I thought that meaning was, was very appropriate for this project. But what do you get with bizarre? What is it? Well, it's a collection of Zeek scripts that look for different indicators in the RPC and SMB protocols. It does analytics 
some very simple, some a little more complex to piece things together. And it does reporting. It'll write to the Zeek notice log the different things that it observes. And it is open source. We published it to GitHub earlier this year, back in March, late March, early April. It's under the MITRE ATT&CK repository on GitHub, so MITRE ATT&CK slash bazaar. And that's kind of the, the background as to, to how this started. So the outline for today's talk. I will give a, a little more background information on the MITRE ATT&CK model. It was great to see in the keynote presentation this morning uh, Freddie's endorsement of the MITRE ATT&CK model and, and how uh, beneficial you know, he believes it is for the, for the community. And just so everybody, I know everybody's seen it, at least they saw this slide this morning. Some may be more familiar with others. I won't spend too much time on it, but just a couple of slides to give a little bit of background. I'll dig into the relevant network protocols, specifically SMB and RPC, and, and then move on to attack detection with Bazaar and give a few examples. Not, won't discuss everything that it does, but give a few examples um, of the different indicators and the analytics that, and reporting what you could expect to see in the, in the Zeek logs. And I'll wrap it up at the end with some key takeaways. Now, the MITRE ATT&CK model. ATT&CK stands for Adversarial Tactics, Techniques, and Common Knowledge. You could find more information at the website, attack.mitre.org. It's a globally accessible knowledge base of adversary tactics and techniques, otherwise known as adversarial behaviors, based on real-world observations. It reflects various phases of an adversary's life cycle and the platforms they are known to target. A couple of years ago, MITRE released a technical report. It, it's available, the URL's here at the bottom of the screen. The report was called Finding Cyber Threats with Attack-Based Analytics. It described a seven-step process. Kind of three of the steps, I kind of already had on the motivation slide at the beginning of the presentation. Step one was identify behaviors. Well, my motivation, I wanted to identify execution, credential access, discovery, and lateral movement. Step two is acquiring data. Now, that can be the hardest part sometimes, is having the right, the right sensor or the right tool that can detect the right information. So in this case, the technology I chose is uh, Bro or Zeek. And then developing analytics, and that's kind of where Bazaar comes in. Here's uh, the MITRE ATT&CK model. Across the top, the the column headers in blue, those are the tactics. Those are the adversary's technical goals. There are 12 tactics defined in the attack model. It starts on the top left with initial access, execution, persistence, privilege escalation, defense evasion, credential access, discovery, lateral movement, collection, command and control, exfiltration, and impact. Now the rows under each column, oops, sorry. The rows under each column, those are the techniques. Those are how the goals are achieved. And for example, under initial access, I highlight here spear phishing attachment. So that's how adversaries would gain initial access. That example was already used this morning. And if you drill into it, it'll give you a lot more information on, you know, there might be multiple ways for other techniques. There might be multiple ways to achieve that technique or that that technique can be implemented. And it'll give you more information on mitigations, potential mitigations for it, potential ways to detect it. And it'll give you examples on what adversaries or what threat groups are using it. So in this case, spear phishing attachment, you'll see it's a truncated list or abbreviated list here, APT19 and APT28. And there's a lot more than that that use spear phishing attachments. But this was presented just for an example. And when you consider attack and internal network monitoring, um, a lot of the things in the attack model are, are, you would need endpoint sensors, endpoint security sensors, because it's things that the adversaries are actually doing on a workstation, on, a, on an endpoint. And there are other things that you can detect with internal network monitoring, and I break those down into two different categories. And inside of Bazaar, it's broken down into two categories as well. There are attack techniques that necessarily generate network traffic. An example is remote file copy. That's in the name. You're doing copying a file remotely from one desktop or one endpoint onto another. So that will necessarily generate network traffic that you can detect. And then there's other ones that maybe wouldn't normally, attack techniques that wouldn't normally generate network traffic, 
but it could. If you're familiar with the Windows API, you could specify, hey, this file is not on my box, it's on that box, go get it from there. Or, so another example is service execution. That's one where you figure, if an adversary is trying to execute their, their malware on your workstation, and they want it to persist for long term, so they want to run it as a Windows system service, and it'll have the you know, elevated privileges, and it'll persist across reboots, et cetera. Well, the Windows Service Control Manager has an RPC interface associated with it. So you could access the Service Control Manager on another workstation in your environment and tell it to execute a file that was, for example, remotely copied onto that, onto that workstation. So that's where Bazaar kind of looks at it. There's, there's some things that you would expect that necessarily generate network traffic, and then there's other ones that Bazaar is looking for, but you may never actually see it on the wire. So looking at the Zeek protocol analyzers, and, and I have to caveat this slide, uh, these numbers are you know, from spring of 2018, so that was Bro version 252, 253 at the time. I looked at the SMB protocol analyzer just to get an idea of what was the scope, you know, how, how much visibility was Bro gonna have or Zeke gonna have into the SMB network traffic. And it defines or it recognizes 145 different SMB message types. Now those are SMB commands and some commands have subcommands. So once you break all of those out, um, it has 145 different message types that it recognizes. And the RPC protocol analyzer has 81 interface definitions and more than 1,400 methods. Now, and this is Microsoft language using interfaces and methods, because I dug through a lot of Microsoft developer network documentation during the course of this project. So I slant towards their, their terminology. In Bro, the interfaces, or in Zeek, the interfaces are called endpoints, and the methods are called operations. So operations, endpoints and operations, interfaces and methods. You could think of it like, like a, a software library or like a Windows dynamically linked library where the RPC interface is like a DLL, and the DLL exports lots of functions that allow you to do things, and an RPC interface exports a lot of methods that gives you some, some remote functionality. So those are a lot. Those are a lot of SMB message types, and then that just leads to the question, well, well how many actually SMB message types exist in the Windows operating system. So I wanted to, I kind of had that question to see what kind of coverage it was. Is this 100% is covered? Is it 50%? Is it 20%? I wanted to, to kind of get that idea. And the same with RPC. That's a lot of interfaces and a lot of RPC methods that Zeek recognizes right out of the box, but how many exist in the Windows operating system? Those are two really compelling questions that, that I'll, I'll answer on the next couple of slides. But continuing with the Zeek protocol analyzers, there were two other things that I didn't realize at first. I say that they were bonuses because when I first started the project, I didn't realize that I could use those, but during the course of the project, I said, hey, these are gonna be really valuable to me and I'll probably put this to good use. The authentication protocol analyzers, such as for Kerberos, GSS API, and NTLM, those authentication protocols are used in SMB and RPC authentication. So the fact that Zeek already had those analyzers built in was, was again, a very beneficial starting point. And then using the file extraction analyzer that, that Zeek can extract a file from the TCP stream as it sees it going across the wire. When you think of malware going across your network or to aid in the incident response, to be able to extract that file from SMB traffic as before it even gets written onto the victim box, as it's transiting from the attacking box to the victim, and you see it with Bizarre, you can configure it to, uh, to go ahead and make a copy of that and extract it from the network traffic. So that, that's, that would be a, a very, again, very powerful capability for your incident responders. But digging into the Microsoft protocol specifications for the SMB, there was a lot, there was, I don't know, eight or 10 different different MSDN documents I was digging through, and I found like 332 SMB commands and subcommands. Most of them are in the old SMB version one, which was a very complex and convoluted, you know, 
about 10 years ago, Microsoft created SMB version two to try to simplify it, and it did to a great extent, but most of those are legacy from SMB version one. And once doing the comparison, certainly Zeek out of the box has enough of the, recognizes enough of the SMB message types that I was able to do everything I needed to do. And with the RPC specifications, there's a lot of different documents uh, that, that describe that. And focusing on the MSDN documentation, there were 80 different protocol documents I found on the MSDN website that contained RPC interface definitions. And some uh, documents contain more than one RPC interface. Now that was a lot to go through. And I just tried to document everything I could find. I did have to draw the line at some point. But I counted up to 379 different RPC interfaces and more than 2,500 methods. And what did I do with all this information? Well, then I tried to map it to attack techniques. I wasn't able to do an exhaustive or, or ex, uh, conclusive 100% mapping, but I gave it my best shot. And, and I mapped 145 different SMB indicators to potential attack techniques. And, 1,480 RPC indicators as potentially related to attack techniques. And that's a lot of information. What did I implement in Bazaar? Eight SMB indicators and 93 RPC indicators. So there's a lot more out there that to be analyzed, but for now, this was a, this was a good start. Due to the you know, time constraints and period of performance for the, for the initial project, I had to draw the line, and that that's, was my starting point. And how does that relate to the MITRE attack model? Well, here's what they call a heat map of the attack model of the different techniques detected with Bazaar. Um, the orange colored cells is where I have some confidence of detection. As I described earlier, for a specific technique, there may be more than one way it can be implemented. So the orange is just saying, or some confidence of detection saying, it's more than 0%, and it may not be 100%, but it's somewhere in there. You're gonna get some detection, and I think anything's better than 0%, right? <laughs> and this chart is really hard to see, so let's focus on just the orange cells. Um, in the categories of execution, persistence, defense evasion, credential access, discovery, and lateral movement. Now, in the previous chart, you probably saw that there were a couple of other columns that also had some confidence of detection in there. But those are because these, some of these techniques span across multiple tactical categories. So that's why it, the, the previous chart, the heat map, looked a little more populated. But this simplifies it down to the six categories that I was focused on when I was doing the initial round of development. And from here, I'll focus on four specific examples. I won't go through all 19 of the different techniques. If you have any questions about it, please ask me you know, at the end of the talk or, or during the break and, and we could discuss more. But for this presentation, I'll, I'll discuss four examples in particular, starting with service execution. So if you go to the attack website and you read the description on service execution, here's an excerpt from it. It says, adversaries may execute a binary, a command, or a script that interacts with Windows services, such as the service control manager, and this can be done by either creating a new service or modifying an existing service. It'll have different mitigations and detections on there, and it'll have those examples of the different threat groups that use this specific technique, and, and actually software as well. So you see threat groups like APT32 and FIN6 on there, and you see examples of software like Cobalt Strike. Um, and this was a truncated list. The list goes on and on of different, different threat groups that use this technique. So what does Bazaar give you? What, what actions does it take? What indicators does it look for? It looks specifically for four RPC functions. Um, the RPC interface is the Windows Service Control Manager. You see it on the left as SVC CTL. And these are the four function names, create service A, create service W, start service A, and start service W. And the A and the W, that's just Microsoft's you know, programming language to specify the character set of the strings that you're passing into that function, whether it's A ASCII strings or W wide character strings like Unicode strings. So those are the four functions that we're looking for, that Bazaar is looking for. And the analytics on this are really simple, and, and analytics is probably a, a, an overly generous term because the presumption is 
If you see any of these four functions on your network for remote service execution, for creating a service remotely or starting a service remotely, I presume that is suspicious. It's not necessarily bad, but it's suspicious and you're probably gonna wanna look into it and validate that activity, whitelist it if it's okay, or, or just do some sort of, of analysis on that. And as far as the Zeek event handlers, there's two in specific, two specific Zeek events that you could use, DCE RPC request or DCE RPC response, and that'll give you the information you need for, to identify the RPC interface and the RPC method. For Bazaar, it focuses specifically on the RPC response because that indicates that the attacker already sent the request, the victim received it, processed it, and you know, is giving the response. So I focus on that because that's a little more, um, how do you say, maybe a little better indication that, that something bad did happen, that the target processed it and probably a service was created or a service was started. And what gets written to the Zeek notice log? You'll see a statement such as attack execution, and it'll have the RPC interface name and the RPC method name, in this case, SVCCTL and start service W for this example. It'll contain the IP addresses and the TCP or UDP ports, and it'll have the Zeek connection ID written to the notice log. And, and to be clear, you don't need bizarre for this, right? If, if you are able to send the SMB or the RPC logs to your SIM, whether you're using Elk or Splunk or ArcSight or whatever you're using, if you're able to ingest those protocol-specific logs, then this information is already there. And you could apply the same logic that Bazaar uses to say, well, if I see this interface and method, I'm presuming it's suspicious and I want to take action and I want to investigate. Um, my experience is that not everyone, those protocol specific logs can be very, very large. And maybe not everybody is able to ingest that into their SIM. So that's where I, I with Bazaar, created that alternative to say, well, let's write these, let's, let's write these alerts into the notice log because if then, if you have to pick and choose what logs you pull into your SIM, the notice log is probably one of the ones that you'll choose. And then this information will be consolidated for you there. And all of this is well and good, but uh, as I kind of mentioned earlier, it must be tuned for your environment. So maybe some endpoints, some users, some devices on your network are allowed to start services remotely in your environment. So you would want to whitelist that activity, or maybe it's as granular as, hey, not all of it is bad. I'm allowed, maybe creating a new service remotely is bad, but starting a new service is okay. So you could, you could modify, you know, you could pull those other indicators out and then focus on just the ones that you want. So it's really important to tune it for your environment. The next example I'm gonna present is port monitors. So on the, service, on the surface, that one doesn't sound too bad, port monitors, but what exactly is it? Well, a port monitor can be set through the you know, application programming interface through the Windows API call to set a, a DLL to be loaded at startup, and it'll be loaded by the print spooler service. And they could use this technique to load malicious code at startup that will persist across system reboots, and it'll execute as system. So once you read the description, port monitor sounds a lot worse than it does just by judging from the name port monitor. The examples of this, there's only one threat group in this case that uses it, APT38, that has been observed to use it in the wild and, and documented here on the attack website, APT38. So judging from all of this, do I expect to ever see this on the wire? Probably not, but if it happens, I'd like to know about it. Right? This is something that's probably done locally by the adversary. They'll do, they'll access the print spooler service on the victim box that they've already compromised, and they'll establish persistence that way. But knowing the Windows API and knowing that there's a RPC interface associated with it, it could be done across the network. And I'd like to know about it. 
So as far as the specific RPC indicators, Bazaar looks for four of them. There's two different RPC interfaces involved, spool SS and iRemote WinSpool. And you look at the functions that are exported by those two interfaces, they're really similar. Just one of them is a asynchronous RPC, but it's to add monitor and to add a print processor. Those all sounded pretty much like they fit the description of what was on the attack website and it was a relatively low hanging fruit. So even though I don't expect it to ever see this on the wire, it was trivial to add it into Bazaar. And I figured, hey, that's good. If we ever do see it, um, at least then you're prepared for it. The analytics for this one, it's the same presumption as in the previous example, that if you ever see any four of these functions on your network, that you presume that it's suspicious and you should probably take action to investigate it. And what gets written to the Zeek notice log? You'll see a statement like attack persistence with the interface name and the method name, the IP addresses and ports, and the Zeek connection ID. Okay. You may never see it, but if you do, you want to take action. Um, next, looking at indicator removal on host. What is that one? That, that one, the, the, the title sounds pretty bad. I think you could figure out, it sounds straightforward. That adversaries may delete or alter generated artifacts on a host system to make forensic analysis and incident response more difficult. The specific example that the attack website states is clearing the Windows event logs. Adversaries may try to clear the event logs to, in order to hide their activities. And there's an example list of a lot of different threat groups and, and software that, that do that. So what are the indicators? In this case, I, I chose 10 different RPC functions. The first three are specifically related to the event log. There's two different RPC interfaces associated with the Windows event log. One interface is just called event log. The other one is iEvent service. And you see the functionality is similar, clear. Clear the log, clear the event log file. But what are the other seven? Those are related to system shutdown. So part of the indicator removal, we talked about well, making forensic analysis more difficult. Well, if an adversary restarts or shuts down a Windows box, you, use a lot, you lose a lot of forensic information. You lose volatile memory, anything that might be loaded in memory and the RAM and the cache, those kind of things. All of that would be lost and that would, that would certainly hinder your forensic examination and your incident response. Now, that being said, there's nothing on the attack website that states adversaries have been known to do this. The adversaries have been known to shut down a box either remotely or locally in order to cover their tracks, and that's fine. I took the liberty to add this to Bazaar because if I was an analyst, if I was the incident responder, I would want to know how common it is in my environment that remote system shutdowns are occurring or remote system restarts, that one box is consistently doing that or even just rarely, occasionally doing that. I'd like to know, I'd like to whitelist that activity or, or you know, model that activity to, to see if it's benign or if it's malicious. Simple analytics, detect any of those 10, write it to the Zeek notice log. You'll see a statement like defense evasion with the interface name and the method name, IP addresses, ports, and the Zeek connection ID. And again, you may never see this on your network, but if you do, you're gonna wanna tune it for your environment because maybe, maybe remote system shutdowns or restarts are normal in your environment. You would wanna whitelist that and say it's okay, but maybe clearing the event logs is not normal in your environment and you'd wanna keep that and take action on that. The lateral movement. This one sounds, I think we're all familiar with this one. It probably doesn't require too much um, explanation but I did want to cover the concept of the Windows, the hidden network shares. Examples of the, the three hidden network shares on a Windows box are C dollar sign, admin dollar sign, and, and IPC dollar sign. At, and the distinction between those three is that C dollar sign and admin dollar sign give remote access to the file system. And IPC dollar sign, IPC stands for inter-process communication, and that's typically named pipe access on the device. But the other two are more important because that gives remote access to the file system and that could be dangerous. And adversaries may use this technique to remotely access a networked system. 
So there's two specific indicators here. And again, I have it, have it coupled in this case for lateral movement for Windows Admin Share and remote file copy. Specifically, you're looking for an SMB write command, whether it's SMB version one or SMB version two. If there's a write command that's executed, um, we take a look at that. And I'd say this is where the, one of the first example where the, the analytics are a little more complex because um, Bazaar is trying to detect an SMB write to one of the Windows Admin Shares but not just any of those three, specifically only the two that allow remote access to the file system. It actually is gonna ignore IPC dollar sign because again, that's access to name pipes and that's usually an indicator of remote procedure call activity. A lot of remote procedure call functions go over named pipes. So folks can use it to maybe infer what RPC commands are being executed, but with the granularity that the Zeek RPC analyzer gives us, we don't need to make those, those inferences. We know exactly what RPC functionality is going across. So in order to cut down on the noise, we just ignore IPC dollar sign altogether. And the specific Zeek event handlers that Bazaar looks for, for SMB version one, it's the write and X response. For version two, it's the write request. And you know, before I gave the example of, well, I, I'd like to focus more on, on the victim response message because that gives me an indication that it received the request from the attacker and it processed it and now it's responding to it. Um, at the time, at least uh, last year in 2018, in, in Bro 2.5, 2.6, there wasn't an SMB2 write response event for me to use. So I don't know about Zeek 3.0, I, I need to check on that to see if that event is there for me. If so, in, in future releases, I'll, I'll make that change to utilize the right response. But for now, it uses the right request. And what gets written to the notice log? You'll see a statement like attack lateral movement, SMB file write to an admin file share, the IP addresses and ports involved, the connection ID, and one extra piece of information. It gives you the full UNC path and file name of the file that's being written onto the victim box. And again, that can aid incident responders because they know wh who the victim is and they know where on the local file system of that victim to go looking for. That's where this file was, to where this file was written. And again, must be tuned for your environment. This is all good because you know maybe remote file copies are okay, maybe Windows admin shares are okay, maybe only certain boxes are allowed to do that, like your patch management, if you automatically push patches out, they may use both of these techniques to do it and that's legitimate, so you might wanna whitelist that activity, et cetera. You could get a lot of noise in your environment otherwise. So you, you gotta make sure to tune it for your environment. Um, and remember before we talked about the file extraction analyzer. So taking advantage of that, there's another event that'll get written to the notice log. So by default, Bazaar has that function enabled. It, it is, you can toggle it. There's a, a global variable or a constant that you could redefine to say whether or not you want to extract files from SMB traffic and it is set to true initially. You could always set it to false if it's too much. If it's set to true, it'll go ahead and extract the file and it'll generate another entry in the notice log to say lateral movement extracted file. I saved a copy of the file that was written to the admin share and it'll give you a copy of the file name and it'll save it locally on the Bro or on the Zeek device. And it'll give you the IP addresses, the ports, the Zeek connection ID from which it was extracted, the Zeek file ID, and it'll contain the UNC path and file name of the file as it was written um, to the victim box. What's another one? So lateral movement, multiple attempts. So if you have good cybersecurity hygiene on your network, maybe you disabled access to admin dollar sign and C dollar sign. You know, that's a simple change in the Windows registry that you could disable that. So there's no remote access to the file system. So that's great for you, great for your environment. You have uh, you know, heightened cybersecurity, but malware is not necessarily gonna know that, right? It's not gonna know what your security policy is. So if you do have an instance of malware on your network and it wants to propagate, it wants to move laterally, what's it gonna do? It's gonna start reaching out to C dollar sign or admin dollar sign on a variety of hosts. If, if it doesn't work when I connect, try to connect to your box, well then maybe I'll move on and I'll try to connect to other IP addresses, other endpoints in the environment. 
So in such a case, I didn't want to miss that. I didn't want Bazaar to miss that kind of activity because, again, it would only log it in the previous case if there was an SMB write associated with that Windows admin share. So what if there's no write and it's failing repeatedly? Well, using the summary statistics framework from Bro or Zeek, we could now kind of connect these dots together and give a consolidated entry. So with summary statistics, we specify a, a number, minimum number of occurrences. So if you see you know, up to five or at least five, let's go ahead and log it or give a, specify a time frame. Hey, if you see five attempts within five minutes or five seconds or 30 seconds. And also with the final condition being that it's all from the same originating IP address. So if that condition is met, then it'll go ahead and write to the Zeek notice log that it saw multiple attempts at lateral movement. But wait, there's more. So what if we talked about remote execution at the beginning? That was the first example we talked about. Remote execution or lateral movement and remote execution. Well, those two things naturally go together. And what if, what if one of them by itself is okay? What if lateral movement, oh, that's okay, that's benign in my environment, that's not too bad, I could ignore that. And what if execution, remote execution, well maybe that's okay in my environment too, I'm not, I'm not gonna make a big deal about it. But what if I see both of those two things happening together around the same time against the same endpoint? Well now I really care about that. That's really gonna get my incident responders called into action. So using some scoring with the summary statistics uh, framework again, if it sees an SMB file write, it'll use a score of one. If it sees an RPC execution, it'll use a score of 1,000. And then the summary statistics engine has a few thresholds. Well, if the total score is greater than or equal to 1,001, so that would suggest that you have one RPC execution and one SMB write, or it could suggest that you have 1,001 SMB writes, but then it uses some additional metrics to say, well, if the minimum score you saw was one and the maximum score you saw was 1,000, meaning that you had to have one of each um, within a certain time frame, and again, both of those actions were targeted against the same endpoint, well now, Bazaar is gonna create an additional log entry to say lateral movement and execution, and it'll have you know, statements such as that in the notice log. And then that way, if you really, if, it's, if Bazaar is generating too much noise for you, maybe you could disable logging for remote or for lateral movement by itself, disable logging for execution by itself, and then just rely on this analytic um, to give you, give you better information and reduce some of the noise. Oh, prototype testing. So last year, you know, I learned it was a lot harder, it was a lot easier to find out copies of actual malware and download that into my environment than it was to find a packet capture file of the network traffic that the malware generates. So it was actually due to the, it was a, you know, a, a lower cost project within the company. I had money for, for funding time, but not really for acquiring, you know, developing a lab or doing those kind of things. But I was able to take advantage of, of this other product called MITRE, MITRE product called Caldera. It's an automated red team agent. It's published on GitHub, you could download it there. And it emulates adversary behaviors based on the attack model. So that was a good tool. There were some guys in the company that were doing a Caldera exercise. I said, hey, can you do some packet capture and send it to me? So I was able to use that as the initial, initial testing for, the, for Bazaar. And while all the features weren't tested 100% in Bazaar, I was able to get a quite a good number, a quite a good amount of testing. And that being said, this was in the early part of the project. Since then, it's been operational in, in some of uh, our MITRE customer environments for more than a year now. And since it was publicly, or publicly released in March and put on GitHub, Bazaar's been, I think, used operationally by, by quite a number of folks. So it's got a lot of operational use right now and a lot of operational, how do you say, feedback. Um, so, okay, I got to the conclusion section. And what's the, the conclusion is it must be tuned for your environment. I can't emphasize that enough. There's more to it than that. But let's look at the summary of the different things that it logs. I, I didn't cover all of the, the different techniques, but here's kind of a summary of it for the execution and persistence. Some of the analytics are really simple, just looking for any instance of it, and it's gonna log it. But if you look at the bottom for discovery, that one was a lot tougher because that is the, the RPC functionality used 
to discover user accounts, to discover file shares, to discover you know, group permissions for a user account, all of those different discovery techniques, I mean, that's happening all the time in your environment. This was the most problematic one to do. And I tried using summary statistics for it and setting different thresholds, but operational feedback I've gotten is that this one is still a really noisy one. It needs a little more development to help, uh, help quiet it down and make it more useful. For lateral movement, um, we discussed that one already. And lateral movement, multiple attempts. This was uh, feedback from, from some of the Core Light guys and their customers. So lateral movement, multiple attempts, that log ID is not yet created. That's gonna come out here in the next couple of weeks. We're gonna make an update to Bazaar. And previously, it was just under lateral movement. So you could have two different statements, one that there was multiple attempts at it, but now the multiple attempts is gonna have its own identifier in the notice log. And then an identifier for lateral movement and execution and lateral movement extracted file that I presented earlier. And what were some other contributions to Bro and Zeek? Uh, during the course of this, as I was looking at the RPC analyzer, I, I did find a bug. It was really easy in the code. It said, hey, there's a bug here. This part isn't working well. So I just wrote up the code and, and submitted a patch for the, for the RPC analyzer for the alter context and alter context response message parsers. And those were fixed in Bro version 2.6 last year. And RPC addition, so you remember when I said, well, the, the RPC analyzer in Zeek recognizes so many RPC interfaces, and then when I dug into the Microsoft documentation, I found so many more. Well, I went ahead and documented that in the bizarre RPC constants script, and all of, those, all of that extra information is now identified as part of bizarre. So there's 144 diff more RPC interfaces that Bazaar would give you access to by name, and then more than 1,100 uh, RPC methods are defined by name um, in addition to the 1,400 that Zeek already gives you out of the box. Um, so future work, I believe this is the last slide, so it'll be right on time here at 12 o'clock. Future work, so improving the whitelisting, currently, you know, the whitelisting on the initial release of Bazaar was added as a last minute thing just to show, yeah, you should have this functionality in there, but it was a global whitelist that if you put an IP address in there, it would say, hey, I'm gonna ignore any activity from that IP address for all instances of detection. And that's not necessarily appropriate because while this endpoint, it may be legitimate for it to do lateral movement, like if it's your patch management server pushing out patches, that might be okay, but for that same endpoint to be doing remote execution or any of these other things, that's probably not okay. That's something that you would want to be alerted to. So having that global whitelist wasn't appropriate. And uh, I also got feedback from, from the Core Light guys and their customers as well, saying that that would probably be a very good feature to improve the whitelisting. So it's gonna become very granular, and you could whitelist down to the attack technique. So not just by tactical category, but specifically like under execution. Well, service execution, these are the endpoints or the subnets or the host names, you could specify it by any of those three, that it's okay that they could do service execution. But that same group may not necessarily be on the white list for scheduled tasks or for Windows management instrumentation execution. So it'll, it'll allow you really granular, granular whitelisting capability. Another new feature is going to be to both disable detection and disable reporting. So if you disable detection for a certain attack technique, that will thereby also disable reporting because if you don't detect it, you won't report on it. But you could enable detection and then just disable the reporting. And that might be useful in the case where you have a summary statistics where, well, I don't want to report, I want to detect it, so that I could aggregate multiple instances of it with summary statistics and then write that down, but I don't want to report every single instance that it detects. So that'll help cut down on the noise as well. And that will allow you to, to toggle both of those by attack technique. And, you know, and lastly, there, there's so many opportunities for new detections. You saw how many SMB commands are there. You saw how many RPC methods there are. There's a lot more work that can be done, and there's probably about another eight or 10 that I'm working on that'll be published. First, next release of Bazaar will have the improved whitelisting 
and the disabling toggle switch for detection and reporting, and then a release after that will have potentially some new detection capabilities of additional attack techniques. So, that's my presentation right on time. Are, are, are there any questions? No? Mark, thanks. <laughs>